Hello learners, welcome to NIO's Senior Secondary Biology course. I am Dr. Babita Kola, Associate Professor in the Department of Botany, Zakir Hussain Delhi College, University of Delhi. Today we will discuss respiration of plants and in this we shall be discussing uh, respiration, fermentation, uh, role of fermentation in industry, photorespiration and we will see aerobic and anaerobic respiration differ from each other. We start with part 1 and the objectives of part 1 are to define respiration, fermentation and the events that are basic to the aerobic respiration, the chemical equations involved in aerobic and anaerobic respiration, the role of fermentation in industry and also to compare aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Now what is respiration? Respiration is basically a chemical process by which glucose which is a carbohydrate, fats, proteins they are broken down to release energy. The equation that is depicted here shows how glucose is broken down to carbon dioxide and water and the essential part of this reaction that is that it releases a lot of energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate which is the energy molecule. This reaction is a complex reaction, it is a, a, a reaction that uh, takes through several pathways and each pathway has a series of enzymes involved in it and these enzymes are very very specific to each step of respiration and ultimately what you get in this process is uh, the essential part of respiration is energy that is utilized by the cell to do a day to day activity and to carry out all the repairs of the body. Now respiration in plants in this uh, process, in this um, slide, what I basically want to emphasize is that the glucose that is broken down in respiration is synthesized through a process known as photosynthesis. Photosynthesis synthesizes glucose which is a carbohydrate and this carbohydrate is broken down in the cells in the process of respiration and this releases as I said a lot of energy that is used for the growth and repair of the body. What respiration basically requires as a raw material is glucose and oxygen. The cells obtain this oxygen from the atmosphere and it enters the plant through stomata which are uh, present on mainly on the green parts of the plant that is leaf, leaves and also on many other um, young parts of the plant of the stem and it combines with glucose which is broken down into carbon dioxide and water and in this process essentially what is released is carbon dioxide, gas, water and energy. Now uh, I shall show you a clip that clearly depicts how sun's energy is trapped by autotrophs that is green plants and by the process of photosynthesis it synthesizes glucose which is an energy rich molecule and how heterotrophs use this energy rich molecule glucose and break it down through the process of respiration into water and carbon dioxide and also release a lot of energy. So clearly in this clip you can see that photosynthesis and respiration both are happening simultaneously and uh, photosynthesis synthesizes carbohydrates and respiration breaks down the same carbohydrate for releasing energy that is used for the repairs and growth of the body mechanism. Now in plants atmospheric air is exchanged uh, into the plant body by diffusion. Now this takes place either through the general surface of the plant uh, that is through the surface of stems, roots, leaves, uh, fruits, seeds etc. Or it can also take place through lenticels which are the openings on the bark of the tree or through stomata which are present on the green leaves or young parts of the plant. The requirement for oxygen is less in plants than in animals reason is that plants have a large surface area to absorb oxygen which is absorbed through diffusion. Carbon dioxide that is being synthesized continuously that is released as a byproduct continuously diffuses out of the plant and especially it is diffused when it is not being used for photosynthesis. And here interestingly I would like to mention that in plants oxygen is released during photosynthesis that takes place during the daytime. This is used up by the uh, process of respiration. However, the rate of photosynthesis is higher than the rate of respiration. Therefore, plants give out oxygen in the daytime and at night when the photosynthesis does not happen, 
the plants release carbon dioxide. Now here I just want to clarify that there is a myth that um, it has been recently coming in news and people have been following this that if you keep plants indoor, green plants indoor, they are going to release oxygen uh, at, le uh, at least for uh, the entire period uh, in which you are keeping them inside that is 24 hours. Now uh, learners you have clearly understood that it is not true when photosynthesis does not happen the plants will not release oxygen they will release carbon dioxide. So at night plants release carbon dioxide as uh, I hope this clears the myth that plants release oxygen 24 hours it is not true. And interestingly uh, plants release um, oxygen when the photosynthesis is happening but humans and animals which are not able to photosynthesize they give out carbon dioxide at all the time. Now this figure depicts an overall view of respiration. In this you can see glycolysis uh, in which glucose is broken down into pyruvic acid and the enzymes for glucolysis they are present in the cytoplasm of the cell. Pyruvic acid that is synthesized that is a part of end product of the respiration of glycolysis, glycolysis. this enters uh, mitochondria where it uh, enters the pathway of Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle enzymes are present in the matrix of the mitochondria and uh, the food molecules of the food energy that are being harvested in the entire process they are present um, these carriers these proteins are present on the cristae of mitochondria and they harvest energy from the food molecules and eventually uh, transfer this energy into the oxygen that releases water at the end. In all these processes ATP are produced which are energy molecules a maximum amount of energy is produced in the last step that is electron transport system. Now what is the fate of pyruvic acid that is synthesized that is produced in uh, glycolysis. Glucose produces glucose is a 6 carbon molecule and it produces 2 pyruvic acid molecules which are 3 carbon molecules. Now depending on if oxygen is available in the uh, surroundings it will either undergo aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration uh, is also known as fermentation and in this the products will be uh, alcohol if it happens in, uh, in the yeast and uh, interestingly enough this is the process that is industrially being uh, used a lot for the production of alcohol using yeast and uh, there is another way uh, that fermentation happens, respiration happens that happens in the muscle cells of uh, humans and animals when they uh, do lots of workout the accumulation of lactic acid in the muscle cells is because of the fermentation. This causes a little bit of temporary discomfort however when the lactic acid is uh, the um, uh, accumulation of lactic acid is uh, dis it is dispersed into the cells the fatigue naturally disappears. Now what is the significance of fermentation? It is uh, as I said it is used in uh, the industries and uh, their straight away use of fermentation is in bakeries for making bread cakes and biscuits. It is used in breweries for the preparation of wine and other alcoholic drinks, in the production of vinegar, in uh, tanning industry and in curing of leather and it is also used, ethanol is also used as a gasohol which is used as fuel in cars in um, Brazil. In our kitchen also uh, fermentation finds its uh, role in making idli, dosa, batura and dokla that we all enjoy. Now uh, the essential difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration is as I already said that aerobic respiration is the respiration that takes place in the presence of oxygen and anaerobic respiration does not take place in, it, it takes place in the absence of oxygen. And uh, in aerobic respiration there is complete oxidation of the organic substrate and in anaerobic respiration there is incomplete oxidation of the substrate. This is uh, aerobic respiration happens in higher uh, organisms while as anaerobic respiration takes place in lower organisms, bacteria and uh, as I said yeast is used mainly for uh, through the process of anaerobic respiration for the synthesis of alcohol and also uh, anaerobic respiration takes place in muscles of animals and humans which produce lactic acid. The chemical equation for anaerobic respiration is that it breaks out down glucose straight away without uh, involvement of oxygen into carbon dioxide 
and alcohol and also releases a small amount of ATPs. And in the case of muscles, it releases lactic acid and a small amount of ATPs. However, as against this, in aerobic respiration, glucose is along with the oxygen uh, is broken down into carbon dioxide and water and a large of ATPs are synthesized. And aerobic respiration takes place in the cytoplasm and in mitochondria and anaerobic respiration takes place mainly in the cytoplasm. To sum up part 1, uh, I would like to say learners what we have learnt in part 1 is uh, what is respiration, what is fermentation, the industrial use of respiration and uh, what happens to pyruvic acid if it gets oxygen or if it does not get oxygen and also essentially the differences in the aerobic and anaerobic pathway of respiration. Thank you.